Maybe you are a parent right now or a patient and you just want to learn more, connect more with an organization that is doing on the ground work, local and on a national scale. You want to get involved more and do more, then this event is for you. Why might a heart mom choose to volunteer with an advocacy organization? What can an advocacy organization do to help others learn about congenital heart defects? What are the future plans for conquering CHD and how can people get involved? Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna. I am Anna Jaworski and your host. Like today's guest, I am a heart mom. My son just turned 27 years of age on August 11, 2021. Alexander is my inspiration and the reason I'm the host of your program. I'm very excited about today's show, which is featuring a special heart mom. Today's show is entitled Heart Mom Liz Scherer and Conquering CHD. Liz Scherer is mom to eight-year-old Eli, who was prenatally diagnosed with truncus arteriosus. Her family's life changed forever as they were thrown into the CHD world. Eli had his first open-heart surgery at one week of age, his second at three, and may need another surgery in the future. Liz began volunteering on behalf of all CHD families when Eli was six months old. On Eli's first birthday, she flew to Washington, D.C. to advocate for increased research funding on behalf of her son, and all of those with CHD. She co-founded the Conquering CHD Ohio State Chapter. Conquering CHD directly supports CHD families and patients. In 2019, she joined the staff of Conquering CHD. As a donor relations director, she finds it rewarding to work with generous donors who help change the outcomes for CHD patients. Liz has a bachelor's degree in journalism and lives with her husband, Jim, and their children, Maddie and Eli. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna, Liz. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. Thanks. Well, I am so excited to have you, Liz. This is a great way for me to start my day talking to another heart mom. And I don't know a whole lot of people who have Eli's condition. So why don't you start by telling us about truncus arteriosus and exactly what type he has, because I have had friends with type 2 truncus arteriosus, so I know that there are at least two different types. Yes, so he was prenatally diagnosed with truncus arteriosus at the 20-week ultrasound. I had actually brought my daughter, who was 2 at the time, to that ultrasound, because of course it was supposed to be exciting, and here's going to be your baby brother or sister, and just that joy, and my story is similar to many stories who are of those of prenatally diagnosed, but the technician was taking a long time and we were getting worried and wasn't sure what was going on. And then she finally left the room and then the doctor came in and sat down and said, we think there's something wrong with your baby's heart. And I just lost it in front of my two-year-old daughter at the time. So um, it was it was a traumatic experience. You know, I, I don't know if she remembers it or not, but it was, it was, it was tough. She was two. Oh. Yeah, my children yeah. are three years apart, and mm-hmm. hopefully she doesn't remember. Most of us don't remember a whole lot from our second year of life, but that would yeah. be so traumatic to see mommy crying yes. and to know something's wrong with the baby. I'm kind of surprised the doctor didn't recommend having her go outside while he talked to you. Yeah, no one has ever said that. That is a really good point. Yeah, you're right, and I never even thought about that. You know, my husband and I were both there, so all three of us were there. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It just didn't work out that way. So, truncus arteriosus is a condition where the aorta and the pulmonary artery are are supposed to be two. And his is one, like a trunk, essentially. So, he had surgery at a week old to put in a conduit. So, the trunk becomes the aorta, and then the conduit that they put in is the pulmonary artery. So, he is also type 2. He also had ASD and VSD that they had to patch as well when surgery was happening. 
So yeah, you know, those next few months after he was diagnosed was filled with doctor's appointments and extra monitoring and stress and worry and fear and um, not knowing how how we were going to manage this new family, how we were going to balance this child with medical conditions as well as our daughter, how we were going to make that work. It was it was tough. Yeah. Oh, I. Totally understand. Even though my son was not diagnosed prenatally, we had three ultrasounds, three ultrasounds, and they never detected mm-hmm. that anything wow. was wrong. So for us, it was a surprise. And it's hard when you're juggling life with a toddler and then you have another child. For me, I think also what was challenging was I had had a child who was healthy, perfectly healthy, and then to all of a sudden be thrown into the congenital heart defect world it's quite a shock when you're used to bringing your baby home healthy and you just start with all those newborn things. And especially when you already have a child who, in my case, he was begging for a baby brother. You know, we were looking forward to doing all these things with the baby and we were separated because the hospital that we went to was three hours away. And for the first time in his life, he went to daycare and it was such a disruption to our lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the same thing was true with you and Maddie. Yes, it was challenging, but she has always been a great sister. She would put stickers all over my belly. Oh, um, <laughs> she'd so be giving sweet. him stickers when he was still inside. And then after he was born, she would write cards to him. So of course she couldn't write. So it was just like scratched, but it was like lines and lines and lines of words. She just, every day she would give him a new card. I think my parents bought like those box of, you know, oh. of cards and every day she would write a new one to him. So, so she just, had time with grandma and grandpa while you mm-hmm. were in the hospital. Mm-hmm. We were in a hospital three hours away. So the first surgery was to separate or not separate because they kept the one trunk, but to right. add a conduit for his pulmonary arteries. What was the second surgery for? The conduit does not grow with the body, so he essentially outgrew the conduit, and so that's why it needs to be replaced, and or it needed to be, and then eventually he will have to most likely have that replaced again. The last cath that he had might have extended that a little bit, so we're kind of looking at preteen or teenage years for that next surgery. He's had four caths. He also has issues with his branch pulmonary arteries. They are small, so he's had to have them stented and ballooned several times, so that's it's kind of always our, our thing that we're monitoring. He has his next cardiology appointment next week. So all the prayers and crossing fingers and toes, uh, everything goes well. And we will get a, another year of not freedom the from the hospital. <laughs> yeah, being healthy, not mm-hmm. being in the hospital. That would be a good thing. Yes. Okay, yes. so he's eight years old and we're living in a COVID world. I'm actually kind of tired of talking about COVID, but it doesn't seem like we can get away from it, Liz. So what is a normal day like for Eli? It's been challenging. We are very cautious. We have an incredible community of vaccinated people around us. So we surround ourselves with those people so that they, um, both of my children are too young for the vaccine. Right. So we kind of cocoon them and, and ensure that they are safe at the same time, recognizing that this is their childhood. And, right. you know, so do we, you go to the want... park? Do you take them yeah, so he played baseball last spring, Great. and he is playing soccer right now. And an hour or so, I'm going to take him to golf camp. So he is really active. He loves to play Legos. He loves to build anything with tape. I mean, the amount of scotch tape that we go through <laughs> is ridiculous. That was his Christmas present, it was scotch tape. And he was excited by that, by the way. <laughs> of course, every kid has his or her thing. That's cool. Yes, yes. So his older sister wants to be a teacher when she grows up. So he gets to benefit of that because he is officially her first student. So, I mean, she's in sixth grade now and he's in third. So he is already a steps ahead with multiplication facts and things like that because she is <laughs> teaching him all those things and he loves it. <laughs> so, awesome. so yeah, he, they have a good life. We, we try to keep things fun and, and uh, just enjoy all the moments. Tonight Forever by the Baby Blue Sound Collective.
I think what I love so much about this CD is that some of the songs were inspired by the patients. Many listeners will understand many of the different songs and what they've been inspired by. Our new album will be available on iTunes, Amazon.com, Spotify. I love the fact that the proceeds from this CD are actually going to help those with congenital heart defects. Enjoy the music. Home tonight forever. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The opinions expressed in the podcast are not those of Hearts Unite the Globe, but of the hosts and guests, and are intended to spark discussion about issues pertaining to congenital heart disease or bereavement. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Anna. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our show, please send an email to Anna Jaworski at Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. That's Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. Now, back to Heart to Heart with Anna. Liz, before the break, we learned about your son's medical diagnosis and complicated medical history, multiple procedures, multiple catheterizations, a couple surgeries in there. In this segment, let's talk about conquering CHD and the special event that you have coming up in mid-August 2021. First of all, tell me about Conquering CHD's Not Another Lunch and Learn event. Not Another Lunch and Learn is a place to learn about the most common birth defect. Our executive director, David, who is also a heart parent himself, and one of our board members, Amy, who is a heart patient, will share their personal stories and just talk a little bit about what life is like with CHD. Then they'll go on because many people have asked us, what are the greatest needs of the CHD community? So they're going to discuss those things and go into depth and then talk about how Conquering CHD is trying to address those needs. It is a virtual event. It's free, but registration is required really just because we need to send you the Zoom links. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, totally uh, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So this is our second event that we've had like this. And I loved the first one. It was a great discussion. It was a give and take. People were just engaged, listening to their stories and asking questions. It was a two-way dialogue. Well, I love the fact that you have two different perspectives, the parent and the patient, and especially with the patient being an adult, because I know for me, when Alexander was young, I just wanted to know that there were other people like him who were grown up because they gave us such dismal odds of his survival. Mm. I'm sure that's really inspiring to other people. So what is the hope for Conquering CHD to accomplish with this event? We hope to broaden awareness of CHD. Like I said, it is the most common birth defect, and I say that a lot because people don't know that. They don't realize that message needs to be loud and clear. The bug eyes that I get when I say that, like, oh, I didn't know that. And I didn't either. I didn't know about CHD until it affected my life deeply. So we need more people to know about it. Some people think that after a surgery, then the patient is quote unquote fixed, right? And that's not really the case. I mean, yes, we have these incredible surgeries and procedures and casts to give a better quality of life, to extend life, to, to be successful, but these patients are at higher risk for many complications. And so we need to build awareness because we need people to understand that it is a lifelong issue. It is a lifelong disease and we need to continue to keep it in the forefront of our minds so that we can continue to advance medicine and continue to provide a long stable life for these families and patients. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I just went to a podcasting conference and I was talking to everybody about my podcast. And so usually the first question somebody says to you is what's your podcast about? And I was talking to a vendor about their special program that helps you with social media promotion of your podcast. And when I said that it was for congenital heart defects, the young lady that I was talking to said, oh my gosh, and she grabbed the man who was in the booth with her, who wasn't paying attention to me. He was looking at his laptop. He was an engineer, (laughs) so he wasn't paying attention to me, but she grabbed him and she said, his six month old baby was just born with a heart defect. And so it's amazing to me how many times I do say that, that people who are not even in our world are in our world. We just didn't know they were in our world and they didn't know that we existed. So what you're doing is super important. 
With that said, who is this event intended for, and is there anything that people need to do beforehand to prepare for the event? It's intended for people who want to learn more about the real lives, what it's really like to live with CHD, and the frustrations and complications and realities of what that means. If you're an adult, maybe as a child you heard about a neighbor or a cousin that was born with a heart murmur or a small hole in the heart, and you didn't really understand what any of that meant, and it just seemed rather ambiguous. This event is for you. Maybe you are a grandparent or you have a niece that was recently diagnosed with CHD, and your family are using these terms, and they seem really stressed, and they seem alone. You want to help, but you're also struggling on how to help this event is for you. Maybe you are a parent right now or a patient and you just want to learn more, connect more with an organization that is doing on the ground work, local and on a national scale. You want to get involved more and do more Then this event is for you. As far as preparation, I am kind of old school, so I would recommend grabbing pen and paper, but that's just me, or the notes app on your phone and just make sure that you're taking notes and really listen and hopefully it'll inspire you to get involved. And I would even venture to say teachers, Girl Scout troop leaders, Boy Scout troop leaders, karate instructors. Really, this is for anybody, anybody who might come in contact with the most common birth defect. So if you're a teacher and you've been teaching for a couple of years and you have 20 or 30 kids in your classroom, you've probably taught somebody with a heart defect or you will be teaching somebody with a heart defect. What does that mean? What does that mean for you? So really, you know what? I think it's for anybody. I think it's for anybody who cares about people and who is wanting to be conscious of what people live with. And I think that's one of the things with this pandemic is that we've discovered that people are living with things that we didn't know. And people feel stressed and anxious about things. And this kind of event will help you to understand, at least from this population's perspective, what it is that they live with. Especially since you have an adult there. Does she have to take special precautions for when she goes on vacation? What is her life like on a daily basis? And I love the fact that you have the dad's perspective, the patient's perspective, and it's interactive. So you'll be able to hear from audience members as well. So it really is a community event. Takes a village. Absolutely. (laughs) It takes a village. One thing that I like to do when I want to be prepared for something is I want to jot down any questions that I have beforehand, preconceived notions or myths that may befuddle me or may have me curious. So I think if you are a Boy Scout leader or a Girl Scout leader or a teacher, and this is your first time that you know you're going to have a child with a heart defect, write down any of those questions and bring them, and then you can ask. Because I think that's one thing that's really important. Have you ever done a presentation at Maddie's school or at Eli's school to bring awareness to congenital heart disease? I've gone to several schools and talked about CHD. There's a local high school that has a babysitting or like childcare class, like for the seniors. So I've actually gone and talked to that class as they're learning about childcare and what life is like with a medically fragile child. I am really active in my children's school, so they pretty much know that I'm the heart mom. So I have people come to tell me, you know, my cousin just had a baby and the baby was diagnosed, so I'll reach out to them. So I'm kind of that resource within the community. People are always telling me uh, about their family members, and I really am humbled by that, that I can serve these families in that way. Anna Jaworski has written several books to empower the congenital heart defect, or CHD, community. These books can be found at Amazon.com or at her website, www.babyheartspress.com. Her bestseller is The Heart of a Mother, an anthology of stories written by women for women in the CHD community. Anna's other books, My Brother Needs an Operation, The Heart of a Father, and Hypoplastic Left Heart Syndrome, A handbook for parents will help you understand that you are not alone. Visit babyheartspress.com to find out more.
Heart to Heart with Anna is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to uplift, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at www.congenitalheartdefects.com for information about CHD, the hospitals that treat children with CHD, summer camps for CHD survivors, and much, much more. Before the break, we were learning about Conquering CHD's event called Not Another Lunch and Learn. That will be occurring on August 19th, 2021. Don't forget, friends, you need to pre-register so you get the right link. And I'll have you tell us exactly what the link is. But don't worry, friends, if you're in your car driving or if you're exercising, it's okay. We'll have the link in the show notes. And the show notes is where the description of the podcast is. So if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're listening, wherever you saw that description, if you just scroll down to the bottom, I'll have all the important links so you don't have to worry about writing it down right now. But tell me a little bit more, Liz, about Conquering CHD and other events that you have planned. Sure. Conquering CHD was founded in 2013 by two heart parents, David and Amy. They met actually in Washington, D.C. doing advocacy work. So we were founded originally as just solely doing advocacy. And a few years later, that expanded to do support. So we have now grown to 17 state chapters. And they do the local on the ground support, like in the hospital, providing information, providing events, connection, education, resources, things like that. One of the ways that people hear about us first is through our care kits. We provide many different types of care kits. Some are surgical, so it's a larger kit with a lot of information, comfort items. We have our favorite Echo, the owl. He's kind of our mascot aptly named Echo. So he's included in there. And again, resources, we provide the guided questions tool in there, which is a really important tool to help patients and families ask questions. These terms are complex. They're confusing. Maybe the medical professionals do a great job, but to them, it's just another day in the office. To us, this is brand new information mixed in with the emotions. I remember when Amy was working on that because she had a think tank of us older parents. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she said, what mm-hmm. questions did you have? What questions did you feel were important to have answered? And so we had brainstorming sessions and then we would send her information and help to compile that. And in fact, wasn't it called a different name at the very beginning? It's conquering CHD now, but I seem to recall it had a different name when Amy first started it. Yes. So just last year, we changed our name to Conquering CHD to better reflect our commitment to the lifespan of this disease. Like I've said, this is a lifelong disease and we are here for all patients and families, prenatal diagnosis, through the birth, through childhood, through that transition from childhood to adult care and beyond. So we are here for everyone. I like conquering CHD. It sounds so powerful. And that's what we yes. want, right? We want to conquer CHD. Yes. So I love that. And even if you're not exactly conquering it, you're conquering the fact that there wasn't much information. You're out there. You're being that advocate. You're being that voice. And you're putting that spotlight right on congenital heart disease where it needs to be. Because unfortunately, we don't have the... United States government providing a ton of research dollars behind it. And we probably are not going to get the money until we just beat everybody over the head with the fact that this is the number one birth event. Why aren't you funding it? To your point, yes, we're empowering patients and families to understand, to learn more about their diagnoses and how to approach it. And that's what that Learn and Learn is all about, too. Mm-hmm. Them. Yeah. And one of the things that you said was focused on patients and families getting information and data, and that is very important to us. Last year, we launched our Hospital Navigator, which is a tool for patients and families to go online and look up their local centers to learn about their hospital outcomes. Some hospitals will provide that information. Some, it might be a little trickier. How many procedures do you do a year? What are the outcomes of those procedures? It is so important for patients 
patients and families to be empowered with this information, and we need to continue to provide that information. That's very important to us. Right. And that's not something when you first get into the CHD world that you may even think about. I didn't. And it's probably a good thing because 27 years ago, the numbers would have been really tiny. So if the hospital that you're looking at, friends, doesn't have exactly the numbers that you want, that doesn't mean they won't do a good job. At least now you have access to more information so you can make a more informed decision. And I think that's great. But I am impressed with all the resources that I'm seeing. Tell us about the website and how people can decide to be part of the community, especially now that there are chapters. This is really awesome. ConqueringCHD.org is where you can find more information about everything we're doing. We are right now preparing for our annual conference in February, February 27th, 2022. It's going to be in Washington, D.C., and we're very excited that it will be in person this year. And we're expanding that to invite speakers to talk about different topics such as access to quality care, mental health issues, the heart and brain connection, And touching on things that aren't as fun but are still stressful, like insurance issues, talking about all those things. And then that'll lead into preparation for doing the advocacy work. We'll we'll prep for our conversations on Capitol Hill. And then the next day, we'll go talk to our government representatives and talk about the importance of keeping CHD a priority. That's perfect. Uh, I've gone to the Hill before to do advocacy work with the Adult Congenital Heart Association. They didn't have a conference beforehand to really get me all fired up and prepared for it. Although they did have a session where they taught us what it was that was coming up so that we would be informed. We would know the numbers of the bills and everything. You need to know. And this is not the kind of information that's intuitive. We really work with each individual and we really teach patients and families to craft their stories in a very succinct way to make an impact. It can be nerve-wracking to go into D.C. you, you got to kind of step up, but at the same time, we do a, just a fabulous job doing preparation work and going through all of those terms and the asks that we're reviewing for the year. It's a foolproof method. I promise you will come out of there feeling very confident and proud of what you can accomplish. Absolutely. When I went, I took my older son, Joey, who is three years older than his baby brother, and we let him tell his story. And just like what you're saying, the ACHA also helped us to craft our story. We had time to sit down and work on it and practice on one another before we actually went and spoke to the lawmakers. When Joey told his story, he actually made the young lady who was listening to him cry. This does not just affect the patients and the parents. It affects the siblings, the grandparents. And I think that the people who listen to us were definitely touched. Liz, I was so impressed to see that just six months after Eli's first surgery, you started volunteering with Conqueror CHD. And now you're a staff member. So tell me how people can get involved with Conqueror CHD and what different positions are available. I'm proud to be a part of this. There's so many different opportunities to get involved. Again, we do have 17 state chapters. So I would suggest one of the first steps would to be to go to our website, conqueringchd.org, and going to the link to see if you have a state chapter near you and reaching out to some people that way. We also have different um, committees. So if you're looking to get involved in reviewing educational materials or just connecting on a different level, doing advocacy work, things like that, reach out. Reach out to me and I can kind of put you in touch with the people who are running the different volunteer committees. One of the best ways is to come to D.C. We found that people who go and advocate just get fired up. And that's when that real love of getting involved on the bigger scale is kickstarted. If you have the ability to, I would just highly, highly suggest to come to that. Well, I can't wait for February. I'm really hoping it's going to be a warm February in Washington, (laughs) D.C. (laughs) Bring some Texas sunshine with me. (laughs) I can't wait to meet you in person. And I have a feeling if I go in February, I'll get a chance to meet you in person, Liz. Absolutely. That sounds great. I'm so excited. Once again, friends, we have this, not another Lunch and Learn, activity that's in August of 2021. And you can sign up with the link that I'll have in my show notes. But don't stop there. 
get involved with Conquering CHD. They're a great advocacy group. They're helping people to understand so much more about congenital heart defects. If you have a message that you want to share, this is a group to work with. They will help you to get your message out there. And this is your village, friends. This is the group that can help you to change laws in the United States. That's just huge. Changing laws and getting the funding for research. That's what we want to do. We do want to conquer CHD. Wouldn't it be nice if a certain time in the future from now, we just talk about congenital heart defects as a footnote in the medical journals? <laughs> <laughs> because we yeah. actually did conquer it. I think that would be amazing. Thank you so much, Liz, for coming on the program today and telling us about Eli. I love learning about Eli and Maddie and how you became involved with Conquer CHD. It sounds like you were there from the ground up, which is awesome to see that you have been involved for so many years. And that speaks highly of Conquering CHD. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. So that's all for this week's episode, my friends. If you enjoyed this episode of Heart to Heart with Anna, please take a moment and leave a review on whatever platform you use to listen to our podcast, whether it's iHeartRadio or Spotify, Spreaker, whatever it is that you're listening with. This helps people to know what our podcast is all about. And remember, my friends, you are not alone. Thank you again for joining us this week. We hope you have been inspired and empowered to become an advocate for the congenital heart defect community. Heart to Heart with Anna, with your host Anna Jaworski, can be heard every Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern Time.